Welcome to Briarwood Presbyterian Church's online worship service for Sunday, April the 11th. Briarwood is an open community to all, invited by Christ and inviting others to joyful worship and loving action in the world. A very warm welcome to all of you who are joining us today in worship through this video. My name is Captain the Reverend Andrew Cameron. Reverend Serena is away on continuing education this week. And we welcome Reverend Prudence Neba, who will lead us in today's worship service. I'd like to thank those who have helped make this service possible. So thanks to Reverend Prudence, to Raphael, Stevie, Nancy, and Judy for sharing their time and talents so that we may all gather together and worship God with a joyful spirit. And now Reverend Prudence will lead us in our call to worship. Good morning, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in him. Call to worship. Come, let us worship God, the eternal and mighty one. Come with your doubts. Come with your fears. Come with your questions. God is here to walk with us and open our eyes to the word of truth. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we are here to adore and magnify your holy name. Receive all the glory as we worship you this morning. Hallelujah to the eternal and living God. The gentle healer came into our town today. He touched blind eyes and the darkness left to stay. But more than the blindness, he took their sins away. The gentle healer came into our town today. The gentle healer came into our town today. He spoke one word that was all he had to and the one who had died just rose up straight away. The gentle healer came into our town today. Oh, he seems like just an ordinary man with dirty feet and rough but gentle hands. But the words he says are hard to understand. And yet he seems like just an ordinary man. The gentle healer, he left our town today. I just looked around and found he'd gone away. Some folks from town who followed him, they say. The gentle healer is the truth, the life, the way. Let us pray. Prayer of adoration and confession of sin. Eternal God and Father, we approach your throne of grace with grateful hearts. Thank you for our lives. Thank you for the gift of this day. And thank you, Lord, for this moment of worship and fellowship with you. God, our Father, you have come among us in Christ Jesus to save us. Where there is darkness, you bring light. Where there is sadness, you bring joy. Where there is despair, you bring hope. Where there is sickness, you bring healing. Where there are sinners, you offer forgiveness. Where people are oppressed, you bring justice. Stir your spirit in us, O God, and bless this worship space and time that we may have true communion with you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who is worshipped and glorified forever and ever. Gracious God and Father, you are abounding in love, 
and your mercies endure forever. If we say we have no sin, we make ourselves liars and the truth is not in us. We take for granted your love and acceptance of us. We are often careless with our relationships, more focused on ourselves or other things rather than on you and those in need around us. We spend our days seeking new things rather than seeking your light and truth. Father, create in each one of us a clean heart and renew a right and loyal spirit within us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, we pray. Amen. The Assurance of Pardon Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. Beloved in Christ, be assured that you have been forgiven. Christ says, go and sin no more. Thanks be to God.
Hello! Today we are hearing a passage about something extremely unexpected that happened, and I've brought a game for us to play together this morning. I am going to show you a picture for just a few seconds. I'm going to ask you to memorize everything that you see in this picture. Now, I'm going to show you another picture, but it's not quite the same as the one you've seen. Can you identify what has changed? Did you get it? Yes! Jesus was gone and in his place an angel. Last Sunday, we heard the amazing story when Jesus' body was no longer in the grave. Jesus had risen and risen indeed. Hallelujah! This morning, we're hearing another story of something that happens after Jesus has been resurrected that is extremely unexpected. Let's hear that story together now. Let us pray. Breathe your Holy Spirit upon us, O Lord, as we listen to the scriptures. Open our minds and hearts to receive your living word and be filled with renewed hope. Amen. Our first reading is taken from Psalm 116, verses 1 to 4. Hear now the word of the Lord. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, save my life. Our second reading is taken from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 17 to 23. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially, according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set in God. Now that you have purified your souls, by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. Our final reading is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you're walking along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty indeed, in word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and beside all of this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of them who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? 
Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to, interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us, while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scripture up to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. My friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, because you are God. Thank you for this moment to listen to your word. I pray, Lord, that you will speak through me and let the purpose for which you are sending out your word this day be accomplished in our lives. Bless our speaking, bless our listening, bless the meditations of our hearts. May they be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Dear God's people, after reading the text and the lessons that we had, the first lesson and the psalm, I decided that today we will meditate on the sermon title, O oh Lord, walk with us and set our hearts on fire for you. O oh Lord, walk with us and set our hearts on fire for you. Dear Christian friends, this sermon title can be a prayer. It can also be a desire, but I think it should be a lifestyle or a way of living for children of God who really want to do exploit for him. Life, dear children of God, is a journey. And we all are pilgrims walking through this world. The world is a beautiful place and sometimes fulfilling for some people, but for others, their work is full of uncertainties, difficulties, and frustrations. No matter how life presents itself, there are always unanswered questions that are left because certain events in our lives are beyond human comprehension. That is what I call the mystery of life. The answers to these mysteries sometimes are so difficult to understand, even when they are given to us. And so they continue to foil our doubts about what the future holds for us. When we get to any of such mysterious, inexplicable crossroads, crowded with uncertainties, Sometimes we despair and hopelessness sets in. Sometimes the wise, the powerful, the worldly, those who are in authority get confused and cannot even provide the answers we expect them to provide for us because life in itself is a mystery. I come this morning to remind us that there is hope at the junction of confusion for those who walk with God. God is all-knowing. God is all-powerful. God is an ever-present help in times of need. One songwriter says, when we walk with God, we see miracles in our lives. Yes, extraordinary happenings. It was J.H. Samis, the writer of the hymn who wrote, When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory 
he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Dear brothers and sisters, this hymn writer reminds us that walking with God requires that we walk in the light of his word. We walk in trust and obedience to God. It is at that point that God sheds his glory on our way. That is why I invite each one of us to pray and desire that God will walk with us each step of the way so that we can be the miracles of our time. When we walk with God, he sets our hearts on fire for him. The question we must ask ourselves is, why must we walk with God and desire that God should set our hearts on fire for him? I will attempt a few answers of the so many answers that can be given to this question. The first answer is that the heart is the throne room of God in the body. God says, give me your heart. He does not say, give me your brain or give me your hand. In the Bible, he says, give me your heart because the heart is where God resides. Secondly, hearts that are on fire for God are no go zone for the enemy and his agents. Thirdly, these are hearts that are conscious that Jesus Christ will come again, not as savior, but as a just judge. And so they prepare themselves for the judgment day. Fourthly, these are hearts that have responded totally to the call of God, to God's love, and they surrender all they have to the will of God. Yes, they will always say, not my will, but yours, O Lord. They give God the first place. These are hearts, dear Christian friends, that like Clopas and his friends will go an extra mile, will run to bring the good news of salvation when their hearts are set on fire for Christ. On the seventh note, these are hearts that delight in the truth which are revealed, the truths that are found in the gospel. Yes, last but not the least, these are hearts that understand that no matter how the world may present its case, Jesus is the answer. One songwriter sings his song like this. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Dear Christian friends, it was Henry Ford who once said, and I quote him, those who walk with God reach their destinations. And so as believers in Christ, I want to remind us that the best destination for us is eternal life, spending eternal life with the King of Kings. That is why I invite us this morning to join me as we meditate on the sermon title, O oh Lord, walk with us and set our hearts on fire for you. I would like us to personalize this. We can say, O oh Lord, walk with me and set my heart on fire for you. Beloved in Christ, our sermon text presents once one of Jesus' post-resurrection appearances, a moment in which dreams were shattered. Dreams that were shattered were restored. Hopelessness was turned to hope. Note that this extraordinary appearance took place on a road, not in a temple, not in the synagogue, not in any top-ranking office at that time. The writer of the Gospel of Luke wants to remind his audience to remember that they are all pilgrims. 
traveling on the way, walking the way to eternal life, who ought to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Yes, two disciples of Jesus, one who is named in our text, Cleopas, and the other one who remains unnamed, were walking from Jerusalem back to Emmaus. They had surely gone to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover festival, which would turn out to be the most important Passover feast for all humanity, because it was during this festival that Jesus Christ was crucified and he passed over the sins of all humanity. He conquered death so that we can be alive for the glory of his name. The text says, as they were discussing the latest political news in town, and what is this political news? A spectacular crucifixion of two criminals with Jesus Christ crucified between them. The Romans, dear Christian friends, had set an example on two criminals and on Jesus Christ to signal to all the Israelites that anyone who revolts against their rule will be crucified similarly. They were crucified, I believe, at a strategic position that all eyes will see. And even those who were blind would hear the news loud and clear that something had happened and anyone who disobeyed the Roman rulers would find themselves in that position. As the two walked along, the subject of their discussion drew near and walked with them. Yes, when Jesus Christ himself drew near to them, they did not recognize him. One may suppose that the resurrected body of Jesus Christ was not the same again, and so his own disciples could not actually or recognize him. The text says these two disciples were kept from recognizing him, most probably because the hour of glory, the moment of revelation, the moment when God in Jesus Christ would show them the truth that he was alive had not yet come. The question we have to ask ourselves is, have there been moments in our lives that we refuse to recognize Jesus Christ when he showed up? Jesus shows up just like one of these pilgrims journeying with us. He will not come in his person today. Remember what he said to the righteous in the parable of the goat and the sheep. Whatsoever you do to the least of these, my brothers, and sisters that you do unto me. Notice that the Emmaus wrote this time around was not the usual walk that Cleopas and his friend used to take to Jerusalem and back. These two disciples had all their dreams about Jesus Christ shattered in Jerusalem over that weekend. This is seen in their response to Jesus' question, what are you discussing together as you walk along? Yes, as we go along, let us remember that Jesus walks with us and can ask us questions about what we, dis we discuss as we walk with our friends on this journey. Dear Christian friends, Cleopas and his friends stood still and we are told their faces were downcast. Yes, they were burdened. Their hearts were heavy. The miracle worker they, they, they knew had been killed. Cleopas was surprised that there was a pilgrim in Jerusalem who did not know the headlines of the news in that town. How can such an important political event go by unnoticed by anyone? That was the question in his mind. It was indeed strange that Jesus did not know. Although Jesus was the victim and subject of their victim for the, for the Romans and subject of their discussion, Jesus Christ, dear Christian friends, 
pretended as though he knew nothing about the politics they were discussing. What things, he asked. Dear Christian friends, Jesus Christ is inviting us and teaching each one of us that there are moments in our life when we need to hold our breath and ask the right questions so that we can understand what is happening. Jesus knew that they had believed the wrong information about his mission to earth. The truth had been dished out in, to them in doses that were not right about his lordship. So he took time to listen to what they knew, to understand where they were coming from, and then from there he could correct their misconceptions. The question we should ask ourselves is, what are some of those half-truths that these disciples and other believers today can believe about Jesus? Cleopas and his brother, or the other disciple, believed that Jesus was one of the prophets. They did not know that he was the Son of God. Yes, that was a half-truth. They had hoped that Jesus would be the one to redeem Israel. That is, redemption for them was not in the light of salvation from sin. It meant rescuing the Jews from the hands of the Romans. Unfortunately, the Romans had prevailed again when they crucified Jesus, meaning that the Jews were not redeemed. That was another half truth. They also had some truths mixed with what they knew, like the fact that Jesus was from Nazareth. That was the truth. He was powerful in word and deed. Yes, they had seen him perform miracles. That was the truth about Jesus Christ. They might have heard and witnessed about the miracles of Jesus Christ. On the third day, they said the women amazed them that a vision of angels said Jesus was alive, but the women did not see Jesus. That was the truth. Dear friends in Christ, one of the ways the enemy uses to deceive us so that we will not walk in the light of the gospel is to dish out half-truths to us so that our faith can be destroyed rather than building it. We must strive, dear brothers and sisters, to study God's word so that we can be approved workmen and women for God in his vineyard. When Jesus walks with us, he dispels these half-truths and illumines our hearts with the good news of his salvation. Hear how Jesus rebuked them for their own belief. Yes, dear Christian friends, unbelief is a sin that should be rebuked, not only in the days of Jesus Christ, but in our days today. How foolish you are and how slow are you to believe all that the prophets had said. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter the glory Jesus then revealed the truth to them, beginning with what Moses had taught. Beloved in Christ, Jesus reminds us that the good news of our salvation was announced by the prophets and fulfilled in the Gospels. Jesus, in this statement, is reminding us that our walk with him will know suffering. Yes, there is a cross to carry before we have the glorious crown worn over our heads at the end. When there is no cross, someone once said, there is no crown. We must seek to understand God's word in its entirety. Half-truths are always presented, but when we know the truth for ourselves, when we hide the gospel truth in our hearts, then we can always know it, leave it, and despair those half-truths when they are presented to us. We should not be foolish and slow to believe 
like Cleopas and his friends were in those days. God's word is here today, a lamp to our feet and the light on our path. Jesus assures us that those who walk with God must not be afraid, for lo and behold, God is with them till the end of the age. Dear Christian friends, hospitality pays. When Jesus has, had revealed the truth to them, he pretended as though he was going further. But these people, because they had the spirit of hospitality, invited him and lodged him. Many have lodged angels without knowing. And as they talked with him on the table, Jesus pretended as, as they talked with him, it was at that point that the guests they had became the host for them. Jesus took his place as the beginning and the end. The Lord of all, the one who set the grace before the meals. It is strange to have a stranger in your home and tell that one to say the grace, except you are familiar with that person. And when he broke the bread, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Hallelujah. Be reminded, dear Christian friends, that each time we break the bread, Jesus is coming close to us, willing to open our eyes so that we can recognize him and see his power anew. The question we should ask ourselves is, can we remember the last time our eyes were opened to the truth? How did we feel about this. How did we feel when we grasped the full truth? For us believers, Jesus Christ is the ultimate truth and his word is the standard for our lives. If we cannot remember, then the time to draw close to God is now so that we will seek and desire that our spiritual eyes will be opened. When our eyes are open, we remember the goodness and good news of our salvation. And then like Cleopas and his friends, we can run seven miles without being tired to go bring the news to others. Beloved in Christ, Jesus did not only walk with Cleopas and the other unnamed disciple. He also set their hearts on fire for him. He set their hearts ablaze, on him, ablaze for him when he expounded on the scriptures. Note that studying God's word can set your heart on fire for God. The two disciples testified to this in our sermon text. Were our hearts not burning within us while, we, while he talked to us on the road and opened scriptures to us? The question we should ask ourselves this morning is, what is it that represents the Emmaus Road for you and I? The Emmaus Road, dear Christian friends, can be a representation of any uncertainties, of any moments of hopelessness, moments when we get in to, to the junction of confusion, moments when our faces are downcast. Yes, the pandemic that is plaguing the world today is one of those evident Emmaus Roads. Yes, it can also be unjust regimes, injustices that are meted on those who are classified low in society, inequalities of all sorts, unfair treatment, racism, unfair wages, discrimination, unequitable distribution of resources. We can go on and on and on and on. But the good news for us this day is that when we give Jesus the chance to walk with us, he will open our eyes to the truth, deliver us from all these situations, and set our hearts on fire for his glory. Can we all decide to make Jesus the center of it all? We all need Jesus to walk with us and empower us for greater exploits as we walk our emails roots. Yes, the Lord is our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear?
You must not be afraid of any Emmaus roots because Jesus Christ died to prove to us that he has power, dominion, and authority over all those roots. He won the victory for us on the Calvary cross. All other powers will bow for Jesus Christ, for his blood is the only blood that redeems. So there is hope for us, dear Christian friends. There is hope for us because there is a blood, there is power in that blood that can redeem us. Can we confidently then declare that our eyes have been opened because we know this truth and then our hearts have been set on fire that we can go out for God. Finally, dear Christian friends, we are blessed that Jesus promised us and is walking with us each step of the way as we journey with him. God in Jesus Christ died and rose again to redeem us so that we can know the truth and bring this truth to our brothers and sisters, to those who are dying outside there. When last did you share your faith with someone else? with someone who is not within your immediate circle. Just imagine that Jesus Christ resurrected and with all those doubts and uncertainties in the minds of believers in his days, went up to heaven without revealing the truth to them. Dear Christian friends, Jesus Christ has set an example for you and I that when our hearts are set on fire for him, we will not hold on to any half truths, but we will know the truth. And like Cleopas and his friend, we will bring the truth to other believers and we will tell it to the world. That is why we can have this good news today, because Cleopas brought it, because the unnamed disciple added his voice to testify that indeed Jesus is alive. I come this morning with this hope, message of hope to us that Jesus is alive. Can we dare to step out of our comfort zones and go to those places where Jesus wants us to be messengers for him? The time for each one of us to walk the walk of faith and seek that our eyes be opened is now. I pray that God in his infinite love and mercy will grant us the grace to walk loyally to walk faithfully until we wear the crown of victory at the end. To God alone be the glory. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you for your word. Bless us, O God, and give us the grace we need to walk with you each step of the way. Yes, you are always present, omniscience, omnipresent, omnipotent God. Father, be an ever-present help in times of need for us. And whatever roads we walk, O oh God, as we journey on, let your presence be with us. We bless your name for your word. May it accomplish the purpose for which you sent it out. Receive all the glory, O oh God as we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, dear Christian friends, I will invite us to give thanks to the Lord for all his benefits, for all his goodness towards us as we bring our offerings and tithes in adoration and worship for all that the Lord has done in our life. Let us bring our offerings to God.
Let us pray. Let us dedicate our offerings. Father, you are the giver of all good things. All we have and are belong to you. Receive our offerings and tithes which we offer to you this day. May they raise a sweet smelling aroma before your throne of grace. In bringing our gifts, we present our lives to you as living sacrifices. Bless, we beseech you, all these our offerings, and bless the work of our hands. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Let us continue to pray the pastoral prayer. Eternal God and Father, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We give you thanks for this great moment of fellowship with you. Thank you for your word of truth that comes to quicken and enlighten our understanding. You walk with those who seek and love you to paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Bless us, O oh Lord, as we bring our prayers to you. God of hope and peace, hear our prayer. We thank you, O Lord, that in Jesus Christ, hope is restored, joy and peace renewed, and the future is secure. Walk with each one of us on our different roads of despair and uncertainties. Whatever the Emmaus road may represent in our lives, please, Lord, show up and illumine our hearts. God of hope and peace, Hear our prayer. We bring before you our doubts, fears, and concerns. In a world plagued with a pandemic, we come to you seeking hope and strength to be able to face all uncertainties. Take away the spirit of despair and fill us with new hope. Just like you opened the eyes of your disciples who walked the road to Emmaus with you. Open our eyes to understand that if God be for us, nothing can be against us. God of hope and peace, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick in body and in spirit. You are the healer par excellence. May all who are sick enjoy your healing mercies. Bless all caregivers with strength and love. Meet us at our various points of need and walk with us until we find joy and peace for our souls. God of hope and peace, hear our prayer. We pray for our families, friends, and colleagues. May we be one another's keeper. We lift our children to you who once said, let the children come to me. Do not stop them. Please, Lord, bless, place your hands over their lives and bless them with your fear so that they may grow in wisdom. God of hope and peace, hear our prayer. We pray for our church and all the members. Bind us with cords of love that we may be united in purpose. We lift our minister and all church leaders before your throne of grace. Bless the decisions they make and align our goals and plans in your will. We may make our plans, but you have the last word. Grant us the grace to shine the light of your gospel with zeal and determination. 
May your kingdom come, O Lord. God of hope and peace, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation, Canada, and for the nations of the world. Bless all leaders with the spirit of justice and truth. May they make just and right decisions for the common good of all humanity. Visit war-torn nations and let your peace reign because you are the Prince of Peace. Be a sure presence to the marginalized, the oppressed, and comfort all who struggle to make ends meet. May we shine the light of your love to all who are in need. Open our eyes, Lord, to understand where you want us to shine the light of your gospel. God of hope and peace, hear our prayer. Almighty God, grant us your grace and peace as we go to face the world. We go out assured and confident that you walk with us and those who walk with you are never disappointed. Bless each one of us and remind us that we are your ambassadors. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. benediction. Dear Christian friends, as we go into the world, let us be assured that the God who has promised to walk with us is here and is ready to see us through each step of the way. May our desires be that God will walk with each one of us and set our hearts on fire for him. God the Father God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.